Everybody close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't talk. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't talk. Don't talk. All right, so what we're about to do is a mindfulness activity first. All right, it's just simply deep breathing. Okay? So you're going to breathe in slowly. Put your hands on your stomach and breathe in and slowly for six seconds. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it for three. One, two, three. Out, six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's round one. We're going to do five rounds of this. Ready? Round two. All right. In one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it three. One, two, three. Out. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, round three. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold it for three. One, two, three, out for six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And two more rounds. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold three. One, two, three, out for six. One, two, three, four. Five, six. All right, last round. Keep your eyes closed. Hand on your stomach. Last round. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold three. One, two, three. Out of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Five a.m. alarm clock breaks you up as you sleep. You stretch, yawn, and pray, and you go brush your teeth. You pick out your outfit, which is hard because you cannot look cheap. Upholding your reputation with your mask of a smile, trying to hide the lies that you got lies underneath. Finish the early morning workouts. Now it's finally time for school. You walk through the hallways and you look around and you notice that all eyes are on you. Everyone knows everything about you, from the car you drive to who you date to the type of gum that you chew. A passing judgment on how you did the game last night behind your back is what they constantly do. But you're still walking around like you tough, like you just like a big deal. Embrace all this love and attention that you're receiving, even though you know it's not real. Constantly asking yourself, would they still love me if I couldn't lift weights and couldn't run hills? Would they really only love me because of what I can do on the court or on the field? Any offers yet? Have you committed? These guys who are fake friends are always in your face. And baby girl only want to play with you now, because the gram said your father was just reached over 2K. 2 p.m. comes now, and that's school you have a great day, even if you did have a parent from the argument that you and your family had last night over your love of play. All types of college coaches came last night, and you felt like a star. Then you looked around and saw your friends and classmates, and the stress and anxiety made it harder. Had a bad game on Twitter, and they cut you. They cut you like a cut and a scarf. But you act like nothing happens. It's your emotions that you now have to guard. Sitting alone in your dark room and for yourself, you constantly search. You're depressed, or you ignore that. You can't let anyone know that you're hurt. Supposed to be among the people for whom it always works. But fumble that ball. Miss a tackle. Strike out of this layup, and now you feel like it's coming to hurt. Man, sometimes being a student athlete just feels like a gift and a curse. Oh, we got it. And what was that that I just read to you guys? What was it about? All right, so before, before we start this, this is a conversation. I'm not up here preaching to y'all. This is a conversation. You got to talk back to me. All right, so what, what was that about that I just read to you guys at that point? Mm -hmm. Focusing on yourself. What else? Hmm? Okay, about student athletes. What else? Okay. That poem was about athletes, high school and collegiate, really high school student athletes that come to school and act like nothing happens. 
to what we have now. High school student athletes, they have what I call a Superman complex. Right? They go through a lot of things at home, away from the field or the court, and they come to class, they come to school, and like nothing's happening. Like they're Superman. Nothing affects them. That's what we got to get away from. We got to get away from people suffering and silence. Remember, we telling you about suffering and silence because that's going to come up later on in the presentation. Okay? A little bit about myself, right? My name is Brian Armstead Jr. from Atlanta, Georgia. From the east side of Atlanta, grew up in South Cab County. My family's really Kirkwood, East Lake. I went to Shiloh High School, but down the street, four years started in baseball, played shortstop at the age of 14, playing against 18, 19 year olds. Division one baseball player at Memphis State University. I signed there at, at Shiloh. Came back home, went to Morehouse, got my bachelor's degree in Spanish in 2019. I am currently a student in the Master's in Social Work program at the University of Georgia. All right? And myself is. My name is Giovanni Sutton. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Currently, I go to the University of Georgia, where uh, I am in a uh, social work program trying to achieve my MSW. Also, I was a four year starter at the University of uh, Grambling. After going from the University of Grambling, I went to Eastern University and also played. After that, I went overseas and played football. Also, with all that being said, I graduated from uh, Chicago State University, where I received a degree of Bachelor's of Criminal Justice with a minor in Psychology. From that, I ended up at the University of Georgia. But before that, I come from the inner cities, urban communities of Chicago, the ghetto. So I, not only did I overcome these situations, I live these situations every day. I live, I look just like y'all. Probably went through the same thing just like y'all. Probably suffer as much as you all suffer. But I, my story is not your story. Your story is your story. Mine is mine. I did what I needed to do to be able to achieve, go on to the next level, use my talent, which is my feet and my legs and my power, to be able to go play at a university. From there, to excel. From there, when I did go play overseas, I came back and I played arena ball in Chicago. From there, I achieved in semi-pro ball where I did some great things in there. But however, my situation itself was that I didn't allow my situation to hamper me and stop me from going where I needed to go. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, by show of also too, if you guys have any questions, come on up to the front and ask them, all right? Um, by show of hands, who, who thinks they knows what stress is? What stress? What stress? You right there on the end, for wide receiver. Come on, come on, come, come, come up real quick. Give us an example. Example such as your mom not being able to feed your full time. That's a great example. That's a great example. You have to keep fighting every day. All right. Can you expound on that a little bit for me? So you're saying that a level of stress for you, what you say, is that a mother, a single mother, not being able to take care of their family, feed their family every day. How does that look in a household to a child, a young man like you? Child, it's, it's not really nothing. It's not really nothing because you don't really think about it. You don't really think about your mom and mom and all that child work for each other. Once you get older, it starts to hit you more because you know that your dad went in there and that your dad made mistakes and you don't want to be like that. So you try everything in your power, no matter how bad it hurts you, or how bad it makes you mad, or how much it does, you still try to do everything you can do to reduce. So, in all actuality, you're saying just to being able to pursue, to get out of those levels of uh, seeing the situations in reference to what a parent is going through on a daily and how it looks. It's just being able to be accountable and be responsible for your children. Okay? I see, and and I, I don't want to take this away from y'all, but I see the young lady that came down too. You would like to add something? What's stress in it? Okay. Who else? Who else has a definition of stress? I saw some hands up here too. Next one, check your t-shirt. Check your sweatshirt. What if, what, 
what, what did we talk about before we started bringing the touch? Superman complex, right? Everything going on outside of the field, you have to come to school and act like nothing's going on. Why? Because you have a reputation to afford. And it's hard to do that at, at 16, 17 years old. It's very, very hard. I know that very well, man. I know that feeling very well. I dealt with it as a high school student. A high school student that was very, very talented. I know that. I went through it. It was a struggle for me in terms of going with dealing with those situations. Great at baseball. Great at running at rock. You know, but I, I dealt with it because I had to, and I had to find a balance, some kind of way. And the things that we're going to share today is going to be able to help you all to be able to see some of those things and be able to help you all put things in place for yourself and see things that you ain't the only ones that are struggling from that. And so we want to try to give you something so that you all can help each other to maintain Absolutely. Because I know it's a struggle to come up here every day, and we all, all has got these innocent faces like, man, they just don't know. They just don't know. It's hard going home sometimes when you ain't got food in the crib. You don't want to go to the crib, right? You ain't got food in the crib, and it's hard going home and, and just dealing with those struggles of uh, the confrontation of the household, you know, what our parents going through, whatever. It's hard going home not knowing that. The support is just not there. That's stress within itself. But someone 14 to 17 years of age trying to figure this thing out, let alone the biggest stress in the world is ourselves, society, going in and out of these doors, walking up and down these streets, getting on that bus, getting off that bus, coming in here every morning, going to class, and just trying to focus. So I want to ask you guys a question from a football aspect, right? Football aspect, Friday Night Lights. I had a fan playing the whole nine. What does the stress of a football player look like in high school? I know you guys go through it. So I'm expecting some really, really good examples from this. Some really good responses from this. Go ahead. He needs to say exactly right now. That's a, that's, a, that's a big one right there. That's a big one right there. Okay. 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 Let's focus on these bottom two definitions right here. Right? Pressure or tension exerted on a material object. Basically what we just talked about. Everything that's going on and all of that pressure is mounting. A, a gentleman told me one day that stress felt like if, if he's below a pile of bricks and they just continue adding bricks on the top of him. And that he's continuously being compacted by those bricks. Right? Number three as well. A state of mental and emotional strain or tension result from adverse or very demanding circumstances. The mental strain that you guys have to go through at home. So, tell me some other examples besides being on the field as a, as a football player, or as an athlete in general. I have y'all up. You got school, right? You got school. Go ahead. Yeah, the funny part, y'all, and, you, and you're so right. And now I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna flip it because now I'm, I'm not gonna talk from. I'm not gonna talk from an aspect of someone talking to you. I'm gonna talk from a father standpoint. I may look young, but I'm not. I'm probably three times y'all age. I just look young. But my son is y'all age. One of my sons, one of my daughters are y'all age. My son played at Marietta High School. You know. My other son plays at Marietta as well. But exactly what you're saying is some of those things, and we can tie that into just being accountable and responsible and just working things out, but it's hard. So as a father, I had to look at him and listen to what he had to say just like he. I had to, I had to listen to him. From a therapeutic standpoint, I had to understand it and, and try to come at this a whole different way in terms of being a student than an athlete. It's hard when you're struggling with the mental, with the mental stresses of life. It's hard, and I understand you. I see it all in your face. It's, it's hard, you know. But I think that the biggest thing that we have to learn how to maintain that stress, how how to maintain that stress, how to how to break that stress down, whether it, it don't control us. 
something that I work with him on a lot. So from a football so let's talk about football. Yeah. Who's the guy right there? Who? When is this? When, 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 is he, when is he feeling like this? What is the picture of? What was he doing on this right? Hmm? I heard, I heard right? Why would he be feeling like this at this point? First of all, this right here is, this is the preseason game of this year. And I'm going to tell you why. What award did he win in 2015? Won what? MVP, right? MVP? Last year he had similar numbers to his 2015 most likely player season. But he got hurt. Remember that? Hurt his shoulder. Right? This year he's coming back and he's like, I got, I'm going to put up those same numbers as I put up last year and I'm going to come out here and win this MVP. He gets hurt. He gets hurt. Now from a professional athlete, from a football standpoint especially, you have a family. You got to provide for your family. How do you provide for your family? You play football. You put numbers up. And a lot of you guys in this room right here, your future is decided upon how you perform when you one of those Friday night lights. Now this is this player. Well, you know, I like what you're saying, that even these statistics of Cam Newton, and even though that was when, bro? That was the beginning of this year, preseason football. In which, he's, in which now, he's, been a, he's struggling from the comeback now. The comeback, dealing with the anxiety of the whole thing, and him coming back to a, coming back to a starting position, you know, a, 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 of his team. And now, he's going he's, he to go through the anxiety stage, he's going to go through the stress stage, and the whole mental stage of just trying to get back to 100% to where he come from when he was get, you know, he was out here gaming, and now he ain't. In which this is why he has hurt himself to this point now because he didn't allow himself mentally to get himself right. And it's not just professional athletes either. If you read that set right, right, recent statistics indicate 95% of males, 85% of female athletes report higher stress compared to 52% of non-male athletes. That's y'all. That's y'all. That's y'all. That's not just professional athletes. We got people in high school. We in high school, but that's that. That's not as relative to all athletes. All athletes. It's real, man. You got to talk about it. You can't suppress your stress. You have to address your stress. Don't suppress, address. If y'all remember nothing I'm telling y'all today, remember that. Take that with y'all. Do not suppress, address. Because you can't hide from stress. You can't. And in order to be great at what you do, man, in order to be great at what you do, to go out there and do your thing on the field every Friday against any, anybody, anybody, you have to prepare yourself. And preparing yourself, these are things that y'all should want to know about. These are things that you should want to know about how to better myself as an individual so that when I can get out here and perform, I can be mentally stable to be able to run a league. Let me tell y'all what happens. Let me show y'all what happens when, when y'all when y'all try to hold the stress in and just, just hold it. I, I got it. I can self-medicate. Oh, yeah. Let me show you what happens. Give me three volunteers real quick. Three volunteers. You, right here. This is Mike Pat. Lights in the room. Very square circle, man. Have a little fun since so, y'all uh, still have a school. I know y'all probably see you going. Shake it up a little bit. How y'all see you looking already? Alright, look. Two or five? Happy three or five, absolutely. That's right. Come on. Come on, stand right here. Stand right here. Put your, put your, 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 your heels on the back of the towel, right? Same thing. What? Oh, shoes. Oh, got a better shoe
We just want to show you this. Hang on, hang on one second. Number two, open it up. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, open it up, open it up, open it up, open it up, open it up. So, this look, simulation, reflects on what stress looked like at y'all age. You see how you, you took a pot and you shake it, and you shake it, and you keep shaking it, and you keep shaking it, and you bust it open, you bust it down. When you bust it open, what happened? It exploded. It just went everywhere. That stress. That stress of you going through what you're going through on a daily, throughout your lifetime, throughout your experiences, weekly, monthly, et cetera, et cetera. And you let it build, 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 and it just pop. And let me say something else too, right? I want y'all to take examination of what everything, every soda in these bottles did and the way they came out. Number one, like, like Lonnie just said, you build, you build, and you pop. Number one, didn't seek any type of mental health assistance. None. Any. Any at all. Number two right here, he sought some, maybe not as much as he could have had, a little bit, right? Number three, sought all the mental health assistance he could get. His stress overflowed, because as I said before, stress is going to come out at some point. It's going to come out. It's about how you deal with it, why you have it. You can't let it build up inside of you, because once it comes out, it's going to come out. Number one. Exactly. And mental stress, when it builds, 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 I'm going to give you the diagnosis of what mental stress is really is. It's called a massive stroke. A stroke. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Somebody dying of a stroke? Yeah. I'm going to give you one better. I'm going I'm to I'm relate everything. I'm going to relate everything to, to everything we talked about. So, just like you said, coming home and your mother trying to figure things out. Her day has been bad, her month is bad, her year is really bad. She got to take her to the family. That's what she possibly did. She's trying to figure it out. But she can't. But you think mom okay. You think she's okay. But it's same building. And we don't understand what's going on. When she's hollering and she's screaming, that don't feel stress. And she finally just popped. Why I know about that? My mom. My mother went through it. Mental health and a level of stress, it will really do something to you. And you guys got to really, really look at it. And from a, from a, a youth standpoint, how y'all tend to check out, y'all check out emotionally, physically, and y'all just do some big dumb stuff. Because y'all just don't know how to regulate y'all. Y'all don't know how to self-regulate. And when we don't know how to self-regulate, this is the stress is. This is what we do. Good things have us pop off. Good things make us go do things that we ain't supposed to. You can be the star athlete on the, on, on the team. But you no good to the team if you mentally ain't got it all together. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, let's just to a different subject, right? Let's talk about the effects of stress. Again, talk about mental illnesses, but let's talk about an effect of stress, all right? So, who thinks they knows what anxiety is? Not without, not reading that. Don't give me that definition. But your definition of anxiety. In your opinion, what is anxiety? Nobody? He kind of want to raise his hand right here. No. All right, so who thinks they felt anxiety or no? Did you have any of Friday night. Friday night lights. 
I ain't talking about Friday night at 7 o'clock. I'm talking about Friday night about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. You in the locker room. Any of y'all ever do this before games and stuff? Y'all see the college players doing this, right? Georgia, Florida, Tennessee doing this on the sideline. You know what that is? It's like, y'all call it turn up. Y'all call it turn up. <laughs> turn. Y'all call it turn up. When your heart is just beating out of your chest like that. First like, hit. I want the first hit. Huh? My man, like, you want the first hit. You know? Anxiety. That's anxiety. Anxiety is, is, is your body's response to a fearful future, right? So let me ask y'all a question. Who's that athlete right there? Who? Why would he be anxious right now? He's hurt. But once he comes back from his injury, what? Can I ask a question? And this, and this, not, and this, and this question. Were you hurt on the field? Does this come from the field? So now, when you come back from that same injury, what happened? What's, what's the injury? Okay, four hands. Oh, I can talk to brothers like that. Uh, but, you say you sprained your what? Okay, your patella tendon. So I tore my patella tendon. That's how my career ended. Pretty much some of that same thing. Patella tendon is the kneecap, and it makes you walk. So my, my kneecap was here from a head. As a running back. Ended. But what I'm saying is that the thing for me was if I came back from that injury and I see my man coming, I got the rock, I'm gone. But I see him coming. Do I want to take that, 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 that hit? Do I want to lower my shoulder and go head to head with him? Probably not, so I probably want to go out of bounds because my anxiety say no. I'm scared or slide. That's gonna be you. So let's talk about some situations when you when you feel anxious, right? You feel anxious. So everyone has I don't wanna say fear of something, but they kinda of have things they're uncomfortable, like my man said earlier, uncomfortable with. They're uneasy with. So for me, if a snake come in here right now, who's the fast person to do? Alright, well it don't matter, because if a snake come in here now, I'm running all three of them. I'm not going to do it, right? So what happens is your eyes, your eyes, they become locked in on one subject and your, your, your peripheral vision becomes blurry. You focus on that one subject and that's also a symptom too. All vision gets blurry when you have anxiety. So you start feeling anxious, right? That adrenaline starts coming into your body. It starts coming into your body. Your amygdala, now we're going to get scientific right now with the brain, right? Amygdala is, the amygdala is in the center of your brain. That's what controls your emotions. The fear, that's the most, that's, that's the most probably popular one in terms of the amygdala, your fear. How many of you guys take a science right now? I'm sorry. So what he's, what he, what he's gonna break down is scientific, the whole scientific concept of the, of the brain, the yeah. skeletal system, the brain and what it does and how it is. This is some of the things that y'all probably going through or will go through from the beginning of the year to the end. Right, so three main parts. In the middle, you got the amygdala. The amygdala controls the emotional part of your body. Right, in the front you have, I'm sorry, right beside that you have what's called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is responsible for your memory. All the memories that you have, all the thoughts that you have, flashbacks or whatever, that's your hippocampus at work. In the front you have your prefrontal cortex. When you have anxiety, what happens is your amygdala becomes, it's working. It becomes full. It becomes full. It starts flashing. If you look at your brain from a, like an x-ray counter, a cat scan in your brain, you can see your amygdala flashing when you have anxiety. Right? And your, your fearful or fearful future, that comes in when your hippocampus is right next to the amygdala, and it kind of leaks over into the hippocampus, which makes you remember that event that made you so emotional in the first place. And your, your prefrontal cortex, the reason why I brought that up is because that's turned off. That's turned, literally turned off when you have the anxiety. So now your body goes into shock. And it's kind of like, anybody ever play pinball? So y'all remember the pinball, when you hit the thing, the pinball way up there? That's, 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 the, um, that's the anxiety right there. That's the anxiety right there. Okay? So, now let's do something real quick. Let's do something real quick. I want everybody to look around. Just look around. Just look around. All right, so, that last set right there, 85% of certified athletic trainers indicate that anxiety affects their student athletes. 
that means that if we divided this room, if we was a team, right? We all a team in here. And we say this half of the room, everybody over here has anxiety before the game. That means everybody is scared of the game, of what's about to happen. How they going to perform? Are we going to win or lose? That's the only part of the room that's not scared before the game. At 7 o'clock, we're about to kick it off. So how do y'all think a team, you think a team going to win if a team is anxious on this whole side of the room? That's why it's important to talk about it. Okay, so first, you've got to address it. How many of you go have outlets to deal with certain situations? When you're going through stressful situations in life, when you're going through situations academically, when you're going through home situations, What's your outlet? Anybody can tell me the outlet? What's your outlet? Yes, sir. Your brother. Yes, sir. Your cousin. Y'all? Okay. Okay. I can see it in there. Your cousin, your brother. Yes, sir. Your headphones. Music. Yeah. Like I was. And and that's cool. And that's cool. But we got to go deeper. It's good. That's a good outlet, and that's a good place to start. But we got to go deeper. Yes, sir. You say yourself? How is yourself helping you? You like a solitude. But but you just you just I I, I, I can feel that. But at, at the end of the day, are we really helping ourselves? Or are we suppressing our feelings? Huh? Talk to the mirror, I, and that's good. And you and you given good examples of trying to be able to help yourself. But still, are we helping ourselves, or are we suppressing our emotions and our feelings? We're we suppressing our emotions and our feelings. Yeah, see, that's a fact too. Two thirds of the team, two thirds of athletes, really do suffer from anxiety. Yeah. Literally two thirds. That's a fact. They ask certified athletic trainers, and eighty-five percent of them said that two thirds. Actually, suffer from anxiety before games. That's two thirds of the whole team, and that's okay. And and that's the purpose of we here. This is why we here. Sometimes we just don't know. I'm gonna expect y'all to know. Y'all high school students, y'all got all kinds of stuff on your mind outside of this. But this is something that y'all really should put in y'all back pocket. Mm-hmm. And why I say that is that because I'm gonna say when I was a student, when I was a high school student, I played ball. We, no one never gave us this. We played ball. We sucked it up. We went out there, we played, we, we played, we grind. You know, but it's not saying that what they did was right or wrong, but what I'm saying is now is the days are different. And being able to talk about certain things can help us later on long term down the line. And we got to, even with adults, your coach, everybody here, they go through things. Probably got wives, they got children, and they got to find a way to, outside of their wives, to be able to manage their situations. I got to find a way to manage my situation. And sometimes just talking to myself or this person, it don't work. We have to have an outlet to be able to help us break these situations and scenarios down to, to try to mediate for us, to help us understand what's going on. Because the mind is something, man. The mind, the brain, the brain is something. That's the control center of the whole body. You don't take care of that, you don't have nobody no more. You don't have nothing, man. I have one. All right? But thank you guys for sharing the information that you shared. Today we're going to leave y'all with some information to be to better assist yourselves. Mm-hmm. And some of y'all resources is right here in the school. You just have to know them, and you have to put them in effect. Ain't nobody... In your best interest of you, but you, but you. All right, let's uh, let's sip a little bit. Let's sip a little bit. Who thinks they know what depression is?
counselor? The brother right here with the yellow do rag on. I didn't hear you, sir. Okay. Anybody have? It? Yes, sir. And, and you know what? And you know we got to do this. We don't have to do this next time because I think I, I look at and I'm, and I'm sure me and B are gonna say the same thing. But just like we gave an introduction of ourselves, next time we need y'all to give an introduction of who you really are. I think that's paramount. That tells us a lot about who we're talking to. Well, now we can have a discussion. Hey, Brian. Hey, Terry. And I can know all your names by the time we finish here. Mm-hmm. If we had that brief introduction. Because we don't want to talk to y'all from up here. We want to talk to y'all right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? You know? So let me work there. Anybody else asking us? So let me let me let me let me clear something about depression real quick. Sadness is a natural human emotion. You can you go feel sad. You be sad, you be happy, you be mad. Those are natural emotions for human beings that we have on a day to day basis. The difference in being sad and being depressed is depression is being sad over a period of time to where it stops you from doing what you do every day. When you can't eat because you're sad, that's the point. When you have it, when, you, when you've been sad for two months, right, a month, three weeks, and you can't eat, that's depression. That's depression. All right. So I want y'all to understand the difference between the two. Okay. So <laughs> this guy right here, this guy right here, he's a running back. Who? Rick Boyd. Okay. Know a little something about football. All right. Man. All right. So he struggled with it. Absolutely. Why would why why did why did he struggle with depression? Anybody know why he had depression? No. So what award did he win in, in college? In college, won the Heisman, right? What round was he drafted? First round. That young man was big at about 21. 21. His friends didn't have a million dollars. The people that he came up with. The people that he had in his corner, he's from California, right? But the people that he had in his corner, they didn't have a million dollars. So when he's going through his go throughs on a day to day basis, having a million dollars, dealing with the lights, the camera, the action, running the ball, being on the on the ESPN, dealing with the women, the whole nine, he can't. He felt like he couldn't go to his friends and talk to them about it because they didn't have it. They weren't in the same condition as he was. They didn't win a Heisman. They didn't win a Heisman. So think about that second question right there. Can the same thing, I'm going to ask you this, can the same thing that make, that make it happen, happen make it sad as well? Yeah. How? Hmm? Talk back to me, talk back to me. So what's the question? I like that. Somebody had their hand up back there? So. Pressure bus pipes, bro. Pressure bus pipes. That's what I can say. And some people just don't know how to deal with pressure. Some people just don't know how to deal with the levels of deep pressure. It's grown men, just like myself, 
these coaches up here just don't, they, they, they mask it well, but we just don't know how to deal with it. Behind closed doors, but they kick in, but out here we mask it. And if you don't talk about it, if you don't address it, you try to suppress it, what's going to happen? You're going to pop. It's going to explode, just like the pop. So let's talk about some athletes that had pressure, right? Who are these guys? Who can name these guys up here? This, this man right here, Mike Tyson, people think this is a, at one point in time, they think that he's just a, a stone cold fool. This man is highly intelligent and was highly intelligent then. He just didn't have the right things around him to be able to shape and mold him. And he, he broke to many levels of depression because Costamato, when he transitioned in, in, in Mike Tyson's life, he went straight into depression. Anybody know what Costamato was? was the strength that got him where he was, known as, as Iron Mike. When Costamato died, he went through. And many people go through that when they have a family member that dies. The dad dies, right? Their mother dies. Their auntie dies. Someone close to them, their friend dies. Teammate. They go through that depression phase. One of the best receivers in the game. I, I mean, this, this dude was cold. Y'all know who he is? Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall. He talk about it all day long. If he didn't get the services to assist him to maintain, to be able to help him with his mental situation, he would not be where he's at in his life. He struggled with the same thing that we're talking about now. Anxiety, depression, being able to self-regulate his emotions. Now, self-regulate each, each other's emotions. That's a big thing. That's something I really deal, I dig in, especially looking at young brothers like yourself. Self-regulation of emotions. How many of you all of you young men in here deal with y'all emotions and y'all feel? How do y'all deal with it? Y'all just snap off and you can go from zero to 100? Come on, be real, man. Don't do me like that. I already know y'all. I already know y'all telling the story. What was the question? Dealing with your emotions and your feelings. When you get to a place where you just, you just, you can't take, you just snap, go from zero to 100. How do you dig it? How, how do you deal with it? Are you able? And why? What? Okay, come on. I didn't hear you speak up. Okay. So you express it as a person. So what I'm trying to get to is that self regulation of our emotions. It'll make, and it was it can make, or I know definitely it'll break. When I see you all up in here, I'm telling you, bro. Black men, young black men, not being able to manage your emotions and your feelings, you're not going to make it out of here. I guarantee you that, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. I guarantee you that. All that tough top, that, that tough stuff, mean mugging, uh, uh-uh. I guarantee you ain't going to make it. And, I, and I'm not trying to say it as a put down. I'm just trying to give you a reality. The reality of what's the, the, it's just real. It's real, bro. Us not being able to manage our emotions on a daily, not, be, not be, being able to effectively communicate, not being able to challenge that negative energy and being able to pull it back down. And I know it's, we over here, I'm on 10, I'm about to snatch, the, snatch his wig off. But we got to, at some point, we got to find a way to come back to baseline. Learn how to self-regulate our emotions. We now, have to, man. When we have the person a lot, right? Some people feel like they're not good enough. That's much of the basis of depression. I feel like I'm not good enough. I can't go out here and face the world. Let me tell you something, man. You can't, you can't feel like that. Let me tell you why. Because your value doesn't change based on how people view you. You're going to go through things in life. You're going to go through things in life. If I, come here. So I can, what's, her? what's your name, my brother? Who? What's your name, bro? Yes, sir. Dial. One more face. One more face. One more face. Put it. Come back up, man. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Hey, what's the highest bench in here? The highest bench? Just the bench. Just the, just the, the what? Forty dollars. Forty. Three twenty. Who? 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 Three twenty is. Mojo. Who? Raise your hand. Who's Mojo? You? Okay. Three twenty. It's not. Is it you? What's the What's the match? He was like, he just nasty strong. All right, so let me so let me have that. Yeah, he's just nasty strong. So let me ask you a question real quick. If your max is three twenty, right? Your max is three twenty. Okay, let me ask you a question. Three fifteen is three forty five on both sides, right? Okay. Um, if I put the bar, can you lift that? Just the bar, regular bar, no weight, no nothing, just the bar. You can lift that, right? Okay. Um. I put a 45 on there. Can you lift that? You can lift that. Okay. If I put two 45s on there, can you lift that? You can lift two 45s. Okay. Okay, so three 45s on there. Can you lift that easily? And. Beginner. You're going to get them? You're going to struggle a little bit, right? Yeah. I put a 320 on there. Can you lift that easily? What, you, what, what would you need? So you would need someone to help you lift that extra weight, right? Yeah. Because if you had no if you had no weight on there, you could lift that easily. But when I add the more weight I add on there, the more you need a spotter, right? Yeah. Who are the spotters in your life that you need for mental health? Let me help you out. Licensed clinical social workers, therapists, therapists LPCs, licensed professional counselors, school counselors, your coach, your parents, your teammates to some extent. Because they provide an outlet as well. But you won't get it. You won't be able to lift that weight without a spotter, though. And what he's sharing with you in regards to the spotter, telling your friend may be the spotter, but your friend holding the inside and not sharing it with the coach, you're dying. You know what I'm saying? You're dying. Because him not telling is just, it's like, the weight, you got it, but he just said he's pressing the weight down on you because he's holding it in. He's holding it. In order to get the help that you need, you have to, you have to talk. You have to, and there's nothing wrong with talking about, talking about our situation out. And sometimes we just need that conversation where that, hey, man, Delon, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to sit down and chop it up with you, bro. Hey, man, I'm going to go buy a pizza. I'm going to buy a pot. We're going to just sit up here and chop it up. We're just going to talk about, we're just going to talk about life. How was your day today? It was good. What'd you do today? Okay. Did you rest real good last night? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's have a conversation. This conversation. You rest real good last night? Okay. You want to ask me something? Yeah. Man, I had an enjoyable night, bro. You know, I sat with my son. We talked, we watched the games. We watched the bomb and bears, man. They suck. Yeah. Yeah, I did. So, in your day, how, how, how does... A regular day for you go. You know, do you find do you find some things that right now today or that you are struggling with that you may want to have a conversation about? I mean it's just between me and you. And what are those responsibilities? And it pose a problem for you sometimes. Sometimes it's a lot, and you, you try to figure out how can I get over there and try to get get my brother and still be able to do what I need to do. It's, it's kind of stressful. So maybe we just maybe try to work some out in terms of time management or something like that. You need to learn time management. Well, hey, but maybe we can sit down. We can just sit down. We can, we can talk about this. We can try to put some things in place to try to better assist you in terms of getting there. So that you can get your brother at a suitable time so that they don't make you feel a certain kind of way. Because sometimes it, it kind of make you feel out of place, don't it? Okay. And see, what we're trying to get you guys to understand is the more you talk about things, the more you're able to get them off your chest. The more you're able to get them off your chest, the more you feel like it's not weighing you down. So it's about expressing that. It's about expressing that. All right? So, who goes through? I know you guys got to go. I know I got practice and stuff like that. I just want to touch on a few more things, right? All right. Okay, y'all got practice. So, 
I like to call this a, a kind of a, 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 a hamster wheel, right? A hamster wheel. Because many times people want to be everything that they're not. So, for example, someone may be riding and may not even have any legs. They might just be riding their wheelchair, just pushing along, just arms and body. They ain't got no legs. But he might come across an individual with legs who's in, who's in a wheelchair as well. And the first thing he's thinking to himself is, man, I wish I had legs, man. I ain't got no legs, man. But then the person in the wheelchair might go to somebody with uh, on crutches right now and say, man, I wish I had legs, man. I wish I could walk, man. I know that person's hurt, but I wish I could walk, right? Somebody with, with, uh, on crutches right now might go to someone and see somebody walking down the street and say, man, I wish I, I, I could actually walk and I wasn't hurt. I wish I wasn't hurt. I just want to walk, be free, without the crutches. Somebody might see, the person that's walking might see somebody driving down the street in a beat up car, an 05 Volvo, right? Hug caps off the car, car beat up, the whole nine. And he might say, man, I wish I had a new car. He might see that person in the Tesla, or he might see that person in a, in a Bentley and say, man, I wish I had that car right there. That person in that Bentley might look up and see that person with a private jet and say, man, I wish I had that jet right there. But everybody wants something that they don't have. So from an athletic point of view, from a student athlete point of view, you can never ever judge your teammates because everyone is going through something that they're not saying. Everyone is going to go through conflict. So for example, somebody on the freshman team, right, who's not even started yet, not even barely even playing, he might look at the starter and say, man, I, I should be starting over that guy, man. Coach don't know what he's talking about. I don't know why I'm on the freshman team. Somebody on the, the starter on the freshman team might look at the guy from the JV who's not even started. Not, not starting at all, barely playing. And say, man, I should be on JV right now. The person who's doing that dude who's not playing is going to look at the starting linebacker, starting running back for the JV and say, I should be starting over that guy. There's no way I'm, I'm, I'm you know, on JV and not even starting. Really, I should be on varsity. But the starter on JV might look at the guy on varsity and say, man, I should be on varsity right now. The starter on varsity, I mean, the, the guy that's not playing on varsity is looking at the, at the starting linebacker, quarterback on varsity and saying, I should be starting over that guy. The starting quarterback on varsity is saying, I wish I could be the captain of the team. The captain of the team is going through things that no, he can't tell anybody about because he has an opposed reputation. He has so much to do, right? So you can't ever judge your teammates and don't view them differently because they may be going through something that you have no idea about. And that's for people in general, but especially your teammates because y'all a team, y'all a family, all right? So, the great debate, real quick. Who thinks that Georgia's better than LeBron? You a Kobe fan? That's Jordan, really. You know that, right? That's Jordan. Really. All right, real quick. Who, who? All right, pay up. That's real. Pay up. Who thinks that, Jordan, that, that LeBron is better than Jordan, though? He's some of the same hands, though. All right, so look. He's saying, right? When people argue, when people debate about who's better, what's the number one argument that they bring up? Rings, right? Rings. Jordan is what? Six for what? Six to six, six, right? What is LeBron? He asked me. I thought he was three for nine. Well, well three and nine. Three and nine, right? So, do y'all understand that that man on the right, right there with that purple and gold on, has led, has been to the finals before and led every single person on either team in every single category of basketball and not one? No, he hasn't. But Michael got six rings, 100%. I'm not saying which one's better. I'm trying to emphasize to y'all that you will not win if you don't have a team. Keep game. Keep game. My man, keep game. You won't win unless you have a team. Unless you have a Dennis Rodman who's going to get those 20 rebounds and give you those extra 20 sides. That's 40 points right there. Come on, man. How do you think they got Dennis Rodman? To make Jordan better. But you won't win unless you have a team, though. And you got to utilize the team. And that's and, and, and to even make it, put it in more to like, it's just like you all, offensive defense. You got to have an offense to produce points. You got to have a defense to be able to defend on the opposite side. But then you got to have a special team to be able to pick up the slack here and there. So it's all a team effort. It ain't just no offense scoring all the points and they won the game. It ain't that. It takes preparing from the coach. It takes from the coach sending signals in to the quarterback to run the play. It takes from the coach to send defenses in to the defense. And it takes from you all to go out there and execute what he gave y'all, what y'all work towards on, uh, on a daily for Friday Night Lights. 
If you're not able to do none of those things, you get not no ring. You get not no win. 